You know, as the story goes of creation, even God rested on the seventh day, right? All this beautiful, wonderful creation happened. The, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the animals, man, you know, plants, mankind, you know, man and woman were both were created um, all in six days. And on the seventh day, what happened? God saw it was good and did what? And rested. And so why don't we take rest, right? Why don't we take self-care? If God even rested, why don't we? That's what we're going to talk about today on day seven of Manifest Your Best Life in 88 Days. Now, we've gone through the introduction of visualization, of limiting beliefs, of the, the simulation of, of, of the mere effect and radical change and identity shifting. And we've done a whole lot of work in this very first week. And so today I want to talk about another very important process piece, excuse me, of the manifestation process. And that is self-care. That is rest. That is recharging. Now, for some of us, that feels like the exact opposite of everything that we should be doing. It feels like, oh my gosh, if I, especially if you're an entrepreneur, like I want you to like just raise your hand or leave a comment down below. Um, as to if you're an entrepreneur or this, you've got a side hustle and you've got a day job, like, do you feel the need every day, even on the weekends, even on your days off from your day job, or if you're an entrepreneur full-time, like every day, to feel the need to do something in your business daily, right? So there's a difference between consistency and, and overworking yourself. Consistency means we are going to be just that consistent. We are going to um, work on something, do something, like produce something on a regular basis to remain consistent. And we usually use that in the terms of content and, and effort or study, or things like that, right? So there's some things you want to do consistently. You want to meditate consistently every day. Um, you want to exercise, uh, do something, even if it's yoga, stretching, some sort of physical movement every day. You know, you want to um, practice gratitude daily, all those great things, right? but you don't have to work every day. And I'm going to propose something to you that if you don't take the time to recharge, if you don't take the time to take care of yourself, if you don't take the time to do things that are fun and just like playful and just allow yourself to, to just explore just life and enjoy life, then what did you create this whole business for? I know when you're working a side hustle, right? When, when, when your, your, your purpose is still your side hustle, man, I'm going to tell you, I did work. I worked a lot. I worked a full 40 hour day work week. And then I sometimes would work a full 40 of my side hustle. I still, and this was a few years ago. I still don't know where I found all the time and the energy to do that. I have no clue, but you know what happened three years ago? I walked away from corporate America I started doing my business full time, right? Um, it became I became a full time entrepreneur. I found myself still working probably sixty hour, seventy hour weeks initially. But you know what happened? I got burned out. <laughs> I got burned out. I got burned out. You cannot sustain it. And you know what happens when you get burned out? You can't think clearly. You can't feel clearly. And energy does not flow. Creativity does not happen in, when you're in this space of exhaustion. Like the initiation of that creation, the ideas, the, the, the like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I could do this this way. The discovery. If you don't take time enough to do your own, like, like, like do your own self-development, personal development and learn new skills or learn new things or read a new book or whatever that you're looking to learn or that interests you. If you don't take time to feed your interests, you cannot to then have the ability to then to interject these new ideas into your business or into your life. And I'm using business as an example, but you can apply this in any area of your life. For instance, if you want a successful fulfilling relationship, yes, we're going to manifest it. And yes, we're going to visualize it. And yes, we're going to do like all the work and stuff over these next 88 days on ourselves. But also I'm going to encourage you to actually do some self-reflection, some self-development, some personal development. I'm going to ask you to, to read books or to listen to podcasts or to watch YouTube videos or other content, you know, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, from relationship experts, from 
from relationship coaches, from like start getting other people's input. Not that you're going to like take everybody's advice and just go with it. But if you don't explore and expand your, the ideas or the energies or the concepts, right. That, that can help expand your world, then your world is going to start to contract, continue to contract, and it's going to close in on you in that area of your life or all areas. We need to challenge ourselves, okay? Sometimes that challenge is in the form of play. Sometimes that challenge is simply saying, you know what, I am not going to focus on this today. I'm going to focus on having fun. I'm going to focus on maybe I want to go to a movie or I want to go for a walk or I want to go to the amusement park or I want to go to a different restaurant that I've never been to, right? I want to go explore some things I've never seen before. I want to connect with some friends that I haven't talked to in months or years even. Or you know what? Sometimes it's just good to say, I just want to relax today. I don't need to do anything. I can just be, I can be a human being and not a human doing all the time. Self-care is so important when we're manifesting because like I said, even God rested, <laughs> even God rested, even God rested. So why can't you, and you know what happens when I say, you know what, I'm just going to not, we're just, we're just, I'm just going to just enjoy things. We're just going to have a great time. I come back the next day after a full day of rest or a full weekend of rest. I come back empowered. I come back motivated. I come back full of energy. I come back recharged. I come back to the regular week ready to go. I get some of my best ideas when I'm kind of not doing anything. I, I, I make the best discoveries. When most of what I'm doing that day is relaxing, having fun, meeting new people, going outside, <laughs> whatever. I could be doing the most random thing and all of a sudden this epiphany happens. Or all of a sudden I meet somebody that's just a gem and I absolutely love having them in my life. You know what I mean? So day seven is self-care. I want you to give me a comment below. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And, and guys, that really helps the algorithms so that this video gets pushed out to more people so more people can see and experience these 88 days and, and we can grow our community, okay? So it really does help the algorithms when you comment, when you hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed or given me a follow, please think about doing that. That'd be great. I would love that, right? So, but what I want you to do is comment below. What things do you like to do for fun? Do you like to go to the movies? Do you like to go for walks? What things do you, what do you do when you really want to take care of yourself? Like I took myself out um, for dinner last night. I didn't go with anybody else. It was just me, myself and I, and I had the best time ever. Didn't feel weird being in the restaurant. It was great. I enjoyed it. So what else do you do? I take myself out to the movies. I go for walks. Like I'm about to go for a walk right now. You know, like go, what, what do you do? And sometimes like two weekends ago, guess what I did? I laid in bed till two o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. I never do that, but I did it. It was great. And I was so recharged. So what do you do to recharge your batteries? And if you don't do anything to recharge your batteries, I want you to comment below. I will rest. Okay, comment that down below. I will rest. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. That's all we need for today. Take yourself a day of rest. Okay, at least once a week, take yourself a full day of rest. And never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. I'll see you soon. Bye. So I know we've talked a lot about other aspects of manifestation already in just a short seven days, but I'm going to circle back around and we're going to start back from the beginning again, only this time we're going to do it from the aspects of your chakras. Um, welcome. If you're just joining me on day eight, there is a an entire, should be a playlist or um, some way for you to go back to day one and uh, go through these 88 days to manifest your best life. And on day eight, we're going to circle back and we are now going to discuss uh, the root chakra. And if you all are not sure like what the chakras are, or if you've never heard of it before, 
think of it this way. Your chakras are energy centers in your body, okay? And they, because they're energy centers, they're not seen. So they're assumed to be there. They're assumed to be in operation um, in Eastern religions and spiritualities, also in Kemetic, um, Incan, uh, even in native indigenous uh, practices here in North America, certainly in South America, we will find that there is some reference to an energetic body or a spirit that exists within, around, uh, <laughs> within, without, all around, up and down um, your physical being. And that's actually what gives you life. So I wanted to focus today on the root chakra. We're going to go through each of the seven chakras um, as we're going through this process over the next seven days. And the reason for that is because we need to get our energy that we set in motion or our emotions in alignment if and, and on a right frequency and a high vibrational frequency if we want to manifest our best life or the life that we came here to have. Now, the root chakra, the root chakra is associated with feelings of safety, security, and stability. Okay. The root chakra is going to kind of govern the, the, the basic needs, right? So food, water, shelter, um, physical and emotional safety. Um, also the emotional need, um, to like let go of fear, right? So fear is a root and it's a root energy. It's a root chakra energy. And the need to let go of that fear in order to be able to function properly at a high level in the world is where we are aspiring to. So the root chakra then controls all of that. Okay. Now, why is it so important? Why am I starting with the root or our basic needs, wants, desires, the fear, uh, stability, all of that? Why am I starting there when we're talking about manifestation? When, you know, isn't it the fact that you just kind of go out here and you, 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 you visualize and you meditate and you do all of these things? And that all sounds like very high level, very ethereal, very spiritual things to do, right? And to some degree, you are correct. They are. And yes, does it initiate in the ether? Does it initiate in your spiritual realm? Or does the does the does manifestation start in your dreams? Absolutely. However, if we don't have a proper anchor here in the earth realm, it's never going to materialize. Why? Because there's nowhere for it to land. I want you to think of the material world kind of as a runway or think of it as just a ginormous, you know, sandbox, right? Or, or, or a ginormous like play area or construction zone where in order for something to come in and materialize, you have to have a stable foundation, right? We don't build houses without laying some level of foundation. In the upper Midwest, um, we actually dig out, right, basements, and then we pour the concrete in, and, you know, we create the foundation of the house that way. In other areas of the country here in the United States, you know, they kind of dig a a spot sort of not very deep. And then they'll put like a concrete slab um, into the ground or I'll pour concrete onto the ground and build the house from there. But in all cases, there's a foundation. And what happens for a lot of people that I have found over the course of time that I'm working with both individuals and working with entrepreneurs and, and helping people to heal various areas of their lives or start their businesses. What I have found more than nine times out of 10, we have a shaky foundation. We don't have proper, uh, we don't have anywhere for this to land. And so we have nowhere for this to materialize. And so we keep spinning our wheels, wanting to manifest, wanting to manifest, but yet we don't have a proper place for that to occur. And that's because a lot of our basic needs haven't been met yet necessarily, or we don't feel stable in that. And the way you feel stable in that is then 
honestly, we just kind of start to manifest that. And so that we're not worried for that. Even in the Bible, it talks about, you know, that the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, right? They don't worry for anything. They don't wonder where their food is going to come from. They don't wonder if they're going to have a place to lay their head or to rest, right? They just know that everything is provided for them. And and the, as the story goes, right, as the, the quotation from Jesus is or was, um, it is that we then, and why would we be worried that we're not going to be taken care of? Well, that in and of itself is like such a deep metaphysical statement to make that when you get out of this energy of worry, of doubt, of concern, of all of those things, when you get out of fear, it is amazing what begins to happen in your life. Because you are operating then at a higher vibration where you're not worried that God, the universe, love, source, spirit, that that the, the controlling, so to speak, energy that um, creates life and sustenance, that you are not worried that that energy is not going to show up for you in every basic way that you need. So this is the very first thing that we need to do is really get into our root chakra and see what's going on. I mean, if you're feeling unstable in any area, then I'm going to recommend to you, you do something called grounding, right? And what is grounding? Grounding is not the one thing that, well, it probably is the one thing that a lot of spiritual people hate to do, but grounding is really getting settled in the fact that you are always going to be taken care of, that, that, your basic needs, their grounded needs, your roots are strong and you're okay. Everything's fine. Okay. So we need to find out why we're not feeling safe, why we're not grounded, why we remain in worry, because the more you remain in worry, the more you push away all of your blessings and everything you're trying to manifest, because you're basically saying, I don't believe that it's going to be real, that it's going to be quote unquote real and come into my life. Okay. All right. I hope this has helped you. If it has, I want you to leave some comments below about what areas are you still feeling not stable in? Okay. What are the areas you are not feeling stable in? Where areas are you still feeling unsafe? Where did this come from? This is all kind of that shadow work conversation we've had from time to time. Okay, so that's what I want you guys to do. Leave me some comments and then I want you to, you know, seek out some meditations and some healing energy for your root chakra and things like that. That's going to begin to help you. Wearing red, eating red foods, that kind of thing begins to help that as well. All right, until next time. Oh, don't forget to do the things like sh share, follow, like, subscribe all that kind of great stuff. Okay. But until I see you next time, never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hello there. I just have one quick question for you. Are you up to your sacral chakra in manifestation at this point? <laughs> have you gotten to this point where you're like, I'm ready to create, but I can't seem to create. I can't seem to manifest or give birth to all those dreams and imaginations and ideas and purpose in my life. So then I think we are up to your sacral chakra in readiness to create. My name is Dr. Lisa Brewer, and I am a doctor of divinity and of metaphysics. So I cannot write you a prescription, but I can recommend a good herb. So uh, we're going to talk about the sacral chakra today. Um, we're on the ninth day of our Manifest Your Best Life in 88 Day series. And so if you haven't already looked at the other days, take a moment and look at those other days um, and kind of catch up. Um, but we're going to start off on day nine with the sacral chakra. And I think that it is um, providence that this actually happening, right? What a synchronicity because the number nine is the nine of self-actualization. And so we're going to talk about this very important chakra that's going to help you birth into this world or actualize or create 
create the world that you truly wish to have. In other words, we're going to help you manifest your best life. Now the sacral chakra is chakra number two, and that is located in the area of your reproductive organs, whether you're male or female. The first one is the root chakra. So again, I want you to go back to day eight and like really work on that foundation because now we're in kind of like this good ground, this creative space that's going to help bring all of these dreams and aspirations that are up here into the earth, right? So the sacral chakra is the center of emotions, of feelings. Um, and this is at that kind of pleasure center. Okay. So, but it, physically that's the pleasure center, but also then energetically, it also brings you pleasure too, right? Because when you accomplish something that you have been set out to do for such a long time, when your vision, your dream actually comes to fruition, don't you feel amazing? Like, doesn't that create a huge sense of pleasure? Um, and I, and I want you to experience that all the time, right? I want you to experience that pleasure, that joy, that happiness of birthing something into the earth that is all yours, right? That is your purpose. That is your desire. That is, that is the world that you yourself have created your best life that is of your highest good. Now, just because this is like the center of your emotions, it's believed to be the emotional center or the energy we set in motion. I believe that that is actually kind of like the very earthly, very primal kind of a space that we bring these emotions in because truly the heart is that real center of where all emotion or again, energy that we set in motion, that that's where it really originates. And that's the most powerful place, but I don't want us to ignore the sacral chakra. Now what's important with sacral chakra healing and making sure that it is in balance is when it's not in balance, we feel lost. We feel incapable of creation. Like the energy can't flow from earth on up and from on, uh, on uh, from uh, up above on down. It can't flow because our center for reproduction or where all the magic happens is blocked or it is out of alignment. Our emotions can go all over the place. We can feel like have a low self-esteem, a low self-image where we just we think we're going to be a failure all the time. And that is a really, that, that, that chakra there can be blocked by fear, um, especially the fear of um, death of something in our world dying, not even necessarily yourself, but that you're that just once, have you ever said this? Like just when I think everything is going great, just when everything seems to be moving in the right direction, all of a sudden the other shoe begins to drop or it just, it, it just feels like it begins to escape you, right? Like you get to one, you get to a place and you're like, great, like success is mine. Everything is going fabulously. And then all of a sudden something happens and it escapes you. I'm going to propose to you that that is actually a form of self-sabotage. Like I didn't even realize I was doing that until I was like 49, almost 50 years old, that I finally realized that I was literally self-sabotaging that uh, on day nine, which is today of this 88 manifest your best life in 88 day series. And which I hope you're really taking a part of. And by the way, don't forget to comment below. Like if you've ever done anything, like you you're realizing, Oh my gosh, I've been self-sabotaging. Can you shoot me a comment um, below? And then also, can you give me a like or a follow wherever you're watching this, whatever platform, can you do that for me as well? So that not only are that lets me know that I'm making great content and I should continue, but then the algorithm also will let other people be able to see this and view this. And let's send this 88 day series viral. Like let's make it go viral everywhere. Okay. So it's just going to help all of us going to help all of humanity, but getting back to the sacral chakra, like when that chakra is potentially blocked by fear, when that chakra, you're not operating in love, when you're afraid and you're pra practicing self-sabotage, you are literally killing off every good thing in your life. And usually self-sabotage happens because somewhere along the line in our childhood, in our young adulthood, our teenage years, what have you, we've been told over and over and over again, 
that you can't attain, you can't get those dreams that you want, or we've been disappointed over and over and over again. People have abandoned us. People have not followed through. They've not been supportive. Like all of these things, we've been disappointed over and over again. And so we create this wall that's around us. And then to protect us, then we stop expecting good things to happen. We stop expecting that we can bear birth, bring into the earth, right? Our, how, what we truly want, our wants, needs, and desires. We begin to put our wants, needs, desires behind everybody else. And I'm not saying that we should put them first in a narcissistic way, but you can't keep putting yourself last and expect at some point to finish first. It doesn't work that way, right? So these are all ways that we begin to self-sabotage. And I finally realized that I was, like I said, about 49, 50 years old. And I finally realized, oh my gosh, like I keep self-sabotaging. And while other things may have happened to me, understand, I'm not saying that you are literally going in yourself and screwing things up or literally just like making things in a bad way in order, right, to do this knowingly. What I'm saying is that's your expectation. So you're attracting, you are manifesting exactly what your expectation is because you don't believe it deep down inside that you deserve and that you can attain every goal and have every manifestation that we visualize way back on day one and then the new ones that come up. So because that's the expectation, you literally, you, you reap what you sow. You're sowing that you're not going to get it. And so that's exactly what you read. Okay. So when we're working with the sacral chakra, you know, there are, there are plenty out here all over like on YouTube or Instagram or on Apple music or Spotify. There's so many ways to do a TikTok sacral healing, right? There's some of us that are Reiki healers and shamans and energy healers in general that sometimes we put out videos that are for sacral healing, sacral chakra healing. So I, what I want you to do first is really like tune in to that sacral chakra healing. And then I want you to really think about and 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 reflect on who throughout your life has begun to has told you that you don't deserve the best. You know, who has removed pleasure from you? Who has said you don't you that your needs, wants, and desires are not important? How have you self-sabotaged throughout your time? your life. And as we begin to see those things and we begin to heal that, that's when we begin to see like major changes and big leaps in the manifestation process. If these lower three chakras aren't in line, your root, your sacral and your solar plexus, you're not going to get anything because there's nowhere for that to land. There's nowhere for this to land down here on earth. Okay. So do the sacral chakra healing. Okay. And also just be careful who you give yourself to be you male, female, non-binary, doesn't matter. Be careful who you share your most intimate self with, be it physically, mentally, or emotionally. All right, guys, I'm going to get on out of here. Okay. We're going to see you tomorrow on day 10. And on day 10, we're going to do what? Solar plexus chakra. Okay. Don't forget though, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. I'm Dr. Lisa. I'll see you soon. Bye. Are you feeling a little weak in the knees? Are you feeling like no one listens to you? Are you feeling disempowered, powerless, and unable to change anything in your world? Then I think we might have some issues with your solar plexus chakra. Hi there. My name is Dr. Lisa, and this is 88 Days to manifest your best life or manifest your best life in 88 days. And we are now on day 10. Um, now, if you know anything about numerology, 10 is like the ending of a cycle right before the beginning of a cycle, which would be the actually the number zero. So um, we are on day 10. It is all going to be about your solar plexus chakra. And what is that solar plexus chakra? Well, that's your third chakra, right? We've talked about the root chakra, which is at the base of your spine. We talked about the sacral chakra, which is right in your reproductive organ area. And your solar plexus chakra, that's kind of like mm, right under your diaphragm. That's like your gut. That's your gut feeling. That's your gut emotions. That's where you feel fight or flight. That's, you know, when you're feeling something in the pit of your stomach, that's that solar plexus chakra at work. 
Now, the solar plexus chakra is really responsible. I want you to think of it like your own personal sun. So you know how it feels like when the sun's not shining and, and you know, there's just been cloudy days for days upon days upon days upon days. And, you know, sometimes our moods can get bad and we just feel like, oh, my God, why do I even feel like being bothered, right? You don't really have any, like desire to do a whole lot of different things. That's what happens when that solar plexus chakra is out of alignment and not healed and not operating, as I like to say, on all eight cylinders, okay? So that solar plexus chakra is, um, it governs our ability to be confident, to be assertive, to make decisions, like trust our inner wisdom, okay? Um, it's the key, it really is the key area to unlocking our sense of personal power and building a strong sense of self. So if you are feeling powerless or if people have taken your power from you, so that could be over the years, like growing up um, in your, your, your household, you know, you weren't really allowed to exercise your own sense of power. That could have been due to a, a narcissistic parent, or it could have been due to, um, just, you know, a lot of different things that were going on, right? Or old school parents that were just like, you know, children are to be seen, not to be heard. You don't question anything. You don't. And while I'm saying, you know, children shouldn't be disrespectful, I am saying that there is still a way to cultivate that it's really activating our solar plexus chakra. If you're feeling out of control in your life, that's another area that the solar plexus helps to govern. Now, why is this even important when we're talking about manifesting our best lives over 88 days? Because the, the reason why we're going through the chakra system, right, is because if our chakras are out of alignment and they're not healed, or at least healed to a great degree, right? We've not like kind of gotten rid of a lot of the root issues and major issues that are going on. It's going to be very difficult for us to operate at full capacity in this recreation of the physical world, because in the energetic world, we're still fractured. And the solar plexus, the sacral and the root chakras are probably the three most important chakras for manifestation. Because in the solar plexus, the <coughs> sacral, and the root chakra, you have the sun, you have your ground, and then you have the roots from which the nutrients and the stability, <coughs> nutrients and stability upon which your plant can grow in the sacral chakra. And then your solar plexus chakra is providing the necessary sun and energy and activation um, and implementation for all of those manifestations. So in other words, all of your great ideas and imaginations and visualizations are never going to take root in the earth realm, the 3D realm, until these three chakras are handled, until those three are, 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 are in, a gr in a good place. We're not going to be perfect, but we need to be in a good place. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to just leave you here with an inability to unblock that solar plexus chakra. What we, what we do, the importance of having the sun shining on your life is, and, and in your own being, is that you are, you then understand your own divinity, that you are you recognize that you are the God, small g of your world. And, and you stop placing and giving away your power. Now, I know that's probably going to be a little hurtful for some people, but I want you to hear me out. Even in Abrahamic religions, there's been a misconstruing of what was originally said in the texts. This was never about handing over your power, handing over sovereignty, handing over autonomy to an entity outside of you. Instead, this was always designed for you to recognize that you are a portion, an aspect, a, 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 a piece of the greater sovereign creator, source, spirit, God, and that that piece is having a human experience because that's what you chose to do. You chose to, you, there was a, a decision made and then this experience is for the greater good. That doesn't mean that you ever lost the ability to create your world. That doesn't mean you lost your sovereignty. That doesn't mean you lost your light. 
So when we put things outside ourselves and say, well, if it's God's will, is it your will? Because when you came here, source and you were already in concert. You already knew what the plan was. The whole purpose then of life then is to begin to discover and live out that plan in unity and in peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, and in flow with that which from whence you came and not to be doing it so that you can hurt other people or whatever, right? You're living in peace, harmony, um, and uh, sovereignty along with everything else in this realm. You've been shown how to create. You've been shown how important one of the first things, right? In, in the Bible and in the Torah, God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's how important your solar plexus chakra is. Like it's got to light your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine understanding and all the ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Light, you have an internal compass. That's your solar plexus. So I want you to listen to solar plexus chakra healing music. I mean, it's a gr if there's if it's a sunny day, open up the windows if you can, get outside if you can, wearing yellow, eating yellow foods, all those sorts of things, right? Citrus, but most of all, take your power back. There, you're, you're an I am for a reason. Don't hand it over. Recall it back and reintegrate it back into your being, okay? All right, now, never forget, until next time, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. This is Dr. Lisa. Oh, don't forget to comment below. Comment. Get, leave me some comments about how you feel about this whole conversation, right? How are you feeling about being your own son? Okay? How are you feeling about turning that light on? So leave me some comments. Thanks for the like, the subscribe, or the follow, and the share. We appreciate y'all. See you soon. Bye. Has your heart ever been broken? Have you ever felt like it was never going to mend? Have you ever believed in something so deeply that it just felt like it was jumping out of your chest, like getting ready to happen? Or have you ever felt so hopeful that you knew there was no way that this was not going to happen to you, that you were going to get that job or meet that person or you two would get together, get married, maybe move in. I don't know that, that you were going to win the battle. Well, that is your heart chakra at work. And my name is Dr. Lisa, and I am here to help you manifest your best life in 88 days. And today is day 11. That's just amazing because on day 11, we are talking about our heart chakras. And truly, the heart chakra really does help us to navigate. I would say it is, in essence, the strongest of all of the seven major chakras um, because it has mm, every everything to do with, it has... It is so powerful in this manifestation process because if you don't believe something's going to happen in your heart of hearts, it's never going to happen. <laughs> like it just won't happen. Your heart physically, your physical 3D heart is the strongest electromagnetic field generator within your entire body, not your mind, your heart. Your heart literally from it, it er, comes the issues of life, right? Not just blood circulating through your body, but literally your heart chakra sends out an energy field. It sets your energy into motion, aka emotions, and whether good, bad, or indifferent, or broken, or happy, or sad, or any of that, it's it's going to rule things. It's going to create your world. If you're not feeling good, have you ever noticed you wake up and let's say something, one negative thing happens when you wake up and then you're just like, oh, God dang it. And you're frustrated. Have you ever realized that unless you change that energy pretty quick, that the rest of your day is nothing but a succession of frustrating opportunities for you to like learn or change your day, right? So it literally creates your entire world. Okay. Now the heart chakra serves as the center of love, 
um, for my for ourselves and for others of compassion, of empathy, and forgiveness, and all of those things, joy, peace, all of those things, right? Pain, though, disappointment on that lower level, that lower scale. Your heart chakra is literally right here in your chest. It is the fourth of the chakras. So it is the halfway point between the upper three, the throat, the third eye, and the crown, and the lower three, the solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. And so everything up, down, all around comes right through this gateway. It is processed through the lens of experiences that our heart has, the memory that our heart contains, right? It's processed through that lens. Yes, it does a lot of manifestation and visualization happen here? Absolutely. But the reason, right, this is vision, right? The reason why I it, routinely, every time I go through a meditative process with, 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 with anyone, um, is uh, that I have you visualize, then I have you drop it down into your heart. Because when your heart, when you really get it right here, then we can emit this energy, right? Then we can emit this wonderful energy. Someone taught me years ago, was a YouTuber, and if I can remember his name, I'll put it, put it here in the description. Um, but that when you can bring your kundalini energy up, and we'll, at some other time, we'll talk about kundalini energy. If you don't know what it is, you just Get, leave me a comment and then I'll make some videos on that. But if you can bring your kundalini energy up and hold it here in your heart and bring your vision down and hold it here in your heart, that's like fertilization. The two come together, spirit and earth come together to make manifest because this is the true generation of reality. This, the heart truly does, um, it does rule everything in the matrix because the amount of electromagnetic unseen energy that can emanate from your heart re rearranges atoms and subatomic particles. It draws people in and pushed and repels people from you. It draws in all this wonderful energy. And then when you, when, when, when you heal and you're able to kind of like release, then it releases all the energy that no longer serves you. So it's very, very important that we make sure that our heart chakra is balanced. One thing you'll find, especially if you're an empathic person and you just naturally have a lot of compassion, that sometimes we have so much compassion for other people, we don't have enough compassion on our, for ourselves, and we don't take care of ourselves. So the biggest thing I would say when looking to heal the heart is to really go in and forgive but not just forgiving other people, because we understand that that is really important. Right? I get that. We all know that forgiveness is for ourselves and not for the other person. But what about forgiving yourself? Because a lot of times we hold on to this like guilt and the shame and, and we could have avoided it. And how could we have done differently and all of these things? And it doesn't allow us to truly ever release right? what's happened to us. Forgive yourself. That's the first person, right? You need to forgive yourself and really seek out what, and, and, and I know it's painful sometimes, but it's very important to heal the wounds, to heal the pain, to release the trauma, to transmute it and reintegrate it as power. It's just so important to be at peace because this is really where you create a vortex from. It's not up here. This is a little mini, like little mini, little mini vortex little twister, not a big cyclone, right? So what I want you to do, I want you to be sure that what you're doing is uh, regularly, okay, that you're listening to heart healing music. That's going to be like at about mm, 528 or so. That's going to be a really good frequency to listen to. Go to sleep by it, you know, all that kind of great stuff. Um, water, running water, uh, rain, all those nature sounds, that's honestly going to also smooth and soothe and heal your heart. And as well as the lower three chakras, right? I want you to have compassion for yourself. I want you to practice self-care. I want you to practice self-love. I want you to tell yourself in the mirror that you love yourself. I want you to congratulate yourself on all of your, all of your successes and that you have a wonderful life. And I want you to thank the universe 
true gratitude for having all of these things for the last three months. Like I want you to really, really do that. Wearing colors like green or, or having amethyst or having like malachite or um, other uh, jade, um, all those green stones that all helps, you know, and, and, and if you can diffuse like patchouli, um, if you can diffuse lavender, you know, all the, it soothes, it heals. But the most, most important thing I can say of everything that I've said, every tip that I've just given you is you really need to love yourself. You just you have to forgive yourself, have compassion with yourself and, and, and know that everything you, you've not wasted time. You didn't do things the wrong way. And now you can't recover and all of the, you can, okay. You can, because you cannot love anyone else until you love yourself period. And when you have that ability to love oneself and then have compassion for self and others, that's when you really begin to see what your purpose is. And that's when your heart begins to be healed, whole, and peaceful. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Now, I want you to comment below on how, what tips, what, which one of these tips really helped you the most. Give me some feedback. Let me know if this series is helping you at all. Let me know what changes have happened since we started this series, okay? Can you do that for me? I want you to do that. And if you can, great, awesome, all right? And then don't forget to put a like on here or heart it, whatever case is, wherever you're watching this, and give me a follow or subscribe on whichever platform you're on. All right, and I'm gonna leave this with you. Never, ever, ever forget to give permission to your purpose, to provide for your person. I'll see you soon, okay? Take care. Hey there, so I have a quick question for you. Have you felt like you're just not being heard? Like for some reason, you express your feelings, you tell people what's going on, you tell people what time it is, you tell people how you feel, and for some reason, they either just don't listen or they don't care because they don't honor your feelings. Or do you ever have it where you're trying to find the right words um, to make sure that people get you and that you, so that you can really talk about your innermost feelings, or your innermost thoughts, but it just seems to escape you? Or do people tell you from time to time, mm, that's kind of crazy. Like, I, I don't think that you're right. Or do they think that you're being fake when you're not? Any of these things happen to you? Because sometimes they happen to me. And when they do, can I just share with you, that is an issue with the throat chakra. That is what we're talking about today. <coughs> Excuse me, day 12 of Manifest Your Best Life in 88 Days. We're going to talk about throat chakra healing. My name is Dr. Lisa Brewer, and I am the CEO of Heart of Inspiration, the founder of Lightworker Academy. And I am here to help you prosper in your purpose. So day 12, the number 12, by the way, completely just an aside is kind of the number of governance, right? It's, it's the number of, it's three times four, so it's really kind of setting up your four or kind of your life path in this three trinity so that it all kind of comes together and then can shape your life. And so it's pretty appropriate that we're talking about the throat chakra on the day of governance. All right. So what is the throat chakra? It is literally right here. It's the energy center here. It is your fifth chakra and it is the gateway to expression. It is the gateway to communication. It is the gateway to authenticity. It is also a lot of times people don't realize it really does have a lot to do with our thoughts, um, our mindset, our words, our actions. All of these things um, are a result of our thoughts and our beliefs, but also you can change your thoughts and change your beliefs by the words that you speak. You can change your world by the words that you speak. So when we have sayings like children should be seen and not heard, that's already telling us as children or the children that we're speaking to that our 
thoughts, our speech, um, our expression doesn't matter, that it doesn't matter. And when you stop someone from expressing themselves, you literally stop them from, from being themselves because being is an expression of what is. So when we stop that from happening, we literally stop one from growing, we stop one from maturing, we stop one from the communication, we stop one from being able to create their lives, we stop them from learning how to be the co-creator of their world. Let's try not to do that. But if that was done with, listen, that was said to me all the time. My father, you say all the time, children should be seen and not heard. And I know in the moment, it was usually if we were all kind of making too much noise and being rather rambunctious and all of that. But there was other times that it was stated, you know, where I may have had an opinion. And I'm not saying children should be disrespectful at all. I'm just saying that we need to listen. We need to allow them to learn to express. Because when your throat chakra is blocked, then you can go through life in a fashion where no matter what you say, no matter how you say it, you don't, you never feel like it's enough. You never feel like people get you and you end up with this kind of chip on your shoulder of nobody ever gets it. Nobody ever gets me. Everybody's against me. It doesn't make me make any difference. And it does. Also, when you don't learn how to express yourself and how you truly feel about things, and what you truly think about things, then you begin to speak things into existence or you manifest things that other people want, that is other people's purpose, that's other people's desire for you and not your true desire for yourself. And then you end up not happy, a very unhappy, very, very, very unhappy individual because you're continuing to do things that are inauthentic to who you truly are. So that's why we're talking about this today. So what is governing you? What, 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 thoughts, what words, what expressions, are you really you? Do you really know who you are? Do you feel like sometimes nobody gets it? If that's the case, can you leave me a comment down there and let me know underneath this video? Leave me a comment. Do you feel like nobody gets you? Do you feel like nobody understands you? If you've grown to the point and you've done a lot of the healing and and unblocked your throat chakra, I want you to start to also leave a comment about what difference it made in your life. Okay. What difference did it make in your life? How are you, how has your life changed since you started expressing yourself? Now the throat chakra, the element of it is space. And we haven't talked a lot about this with the other chakras, but this is very important because this, the throat chakra governs the Akasha. You guys heard of Akashic records, right? That's the record of everything that's ever happened in your past life slash lifetimes. Um, it's recorded in where in your brain, right? It's recorded there. That's the belief system. And there's, listen, there's other places like the book of life in, in the Bible is taught, is spoken of in this way too. But The throat chakra holds space. When we talk about holding, I'm going to hold space for you. We are literally moving things out of the way so that the potential for creation and expansion is realized. Literally, life and death is in the power of the tongue, what you speak. So you, when you speak things over yourself, your life, your children, your grandchildren, your job, your business, your lover, your everything, this is what happens. And when you what you speak is literally what you believe and it it's cyclical so what says what you say here actually when your own ears hear you speak some words it begins to program your brain to say well this must be true cuz it's coming from me so if if you've had a situation where your parents or whomever have big, have told you all your life you're never going to be anything more than what everybody else in the neighborhood is. You're never going to be, but you must think you're better than me. You must think you're better than all of us. You know, when you hear stuff like that, and then what do you say back? Well, no, mama, no, daddy, I don't think I'm better than you guys. And you might think, well, you're programming yourself. Mm -mm. You know what you're programming yourself to, to, to then do? You're then programming yourself to, I'm not better than any of them. I need to make sure that they don't feel like I'm better than any of them. I need to make sure that I minimize myself, my needs, my wants, and my desires because clearly they are not more important than them. 
than theirs. Now, listen to me. I'm not saying that narcissistically they should be, but what I am saying is you do need to set the boundaries that you do put yourself first. If you don't take care of your own self first, you can't take care of anybody else. So what I want you to do is really practice this healing of this throat chakra. If you're feeling that this is resonating with you, I want you to say, yep, this is me. And as we're going through these 88 days, and there's going to be some other um, information on this channel, on this page, I want you to go through and seek out healing frequencies and other methods for healing your throat chakra. We definitely want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear you, right? I want to hear everything. I want to know everything. Like I believe in you and I want you to feel free to express yourself with authenticity so that you can create the world that you so desire. Okay. And that you came here to live. It's a critical part of manifestation. All right, that's day 12. Go off and heal that throat chakra. Blues, right? Helps wear some blues, keep some blues around. Listen to some very soothing music. Practice going on and saying, you know, go on and, and say all of your mantras. Speak life over yourself. All right? Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the good, great, great, awesome things. Give me a follow. And never forget. Give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello there. So we're going to talk about the mysterious third eye, like that thing that in Dr. Strange, you might you see Dr. Strange too, like the something, something of madness. And, you know, at the very end, it's like, you know, dark strange <laughs> came out and then his third eye looked really super weird. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. <laughs> um, in fact, you know, having your third eye open and activated and everything shouldn't make you feel like you've got this like physical third eye that's open in the for in your forehead. Um, but you should be able to feel like you can see clearly that you can have an easier vision into the other realms. It is the gateway to your soul and to higher consciousness. It is, it represents light. It's spiritual insight, understanding, clarity, foresight, all of those great things. And we're going to talk about that today on day 13 of Manifest Your Best Life in 88 Days. Now, the third eye is your sixth of the seven primary chakras, okay? And it's located approximately right here. Physically, it uh, is believed to correspond with your hypothalamus, with your pituitary gland, and the pineal gland, as well as the eyes, the ears, and the nose. So it is it is the spiritual or energetic representation of your senses, of the senses that perceive sight or light, smell, and sound. Sight, smell, and sound, not touch. Right. So none of the things that in the in your five senses, right? This, the sensing of touch is directly right. Um, it's for the physical realm, it's for the physical world. But by the very nature of the third eye and the senses that it is associated with, we can see this is not of the natural, this is of the supernatural, this is not of the physical, it is of the medical, medical. <laughs> <laughs> the metaphysical. Honestly, most people, when they say that, oh, I think my third eye is blocked or it's not activated or whatnot, they feel like they lack intuition. They feel like they, you know, maybe they're having a difficulty meditating. Maybe they have a difficulty like perceiving and discerning things that are not in the physical realm. And so that's usually where we're finding that we, we find that, that there are issues, um, that there is a lack of activation, that it's out of balance, that it is not operating properly and cannot focus properly in on what it's meant to focus in on, which is to have insight into the other realms. It is your sight outside of the physical sight. It is your ability, it, it, it garners the ability for you to perceive things that are imperceptible to the naked eye, to the ears, right, to the physical 
realm is it is that extrasensory perception. So when you just know something or when you see in the future, you know, if you're a seer, um, if you, if, you know, when you just know things and you've got that, right. If you're a dreamer, um, all these different things, right. That is, that's your third eye in action. I was, I'm going to say to you that the vast majority of us, our third eye is already acting, reacting, it's functioning. The problem comes in, in that, um, some of us have kind of knowingly turned it off or maybe unknowingly because we're, told like, oh, that's just crazy. Like, there's no way that you just knew that. Or there's your intuition is not something that is celebrated. It is something that tends to be denigrated. And that has a significant effect on your ability to manifest. Why is that? Because if you cannot perceive things in the metaphysical realm, if you cannot perceive your future self, it's so much to such a high degree and with such um clarity that you cannot visualize it that means you cannot attach yourself to any outcome and definitely not the outcome that you really want because the sight and the imagination right happens in this third eye area that's where imagination lies this is like gateway to the heavens now we'll talk about the crown chakra next on day 14 but this is an additional gateway. This is like, to me, the third eye is kind of the translator of all of the information that we get like through the crown and it kind of translates it and then says, okay, this is what it really means in human speak (laughs) in the physical realm. This is what it means. And then that allows the rest of your being to process that energy, process that imagination, process that information and then create something magical. In other words, manifest it. It it is beginning to get tears so that it can come to your throat and you can speak it out. And then your heart begins to believe it. And then your solar plexus, the sun begins to shine on your sacral chakra, which is that good fertile ground of creation. And then your root chakra roots it in so that you can finally what? Manifest it or manny, hand, fast, like feel, have, you can possess it. It festers in your hand. So if you lack sight, right? My people perish for um, lack of vision. I'm butchering that. <laughs> I'm butchering that. But that's true. If you have no vision, you, you're not going to make it. If you can't dream. You're not, then you can't manifest. So it's very important that we balance and that we activate and that um, we honor, right? the the beautiful gift of our third eye. Now, it is typically represented by indigo. So, um, and represents like spiritual awareness and insight, right? And intuition. So crystals like amethysts, right? Um, lapis lazuli, um, even soda light, all of those black, uh, blue kyanite, all of those really enhance and assist um, your, the frequencies that these, that these different, um, crystals give off, they enhance and they assist your third eye. Okay. Um, when you are meditating the OM, that mantra, that, right. Did you feel that? I felt that, that assists in balancing that frequency. Okay. Honoring your intuitive nature. So when you just know that you know that you know something and it comes to pass, when you had a feeling something was going to happen and then it happens, I want you to honor that. I want you to be like, I knew that was going to happen, right? And pay attention to all those little things during the day because that begins to strengthen your third eye, okay? That begins to strengthen your third eye. One last thing before I let you go. Activating your third eye does not mean that you are tapping into some other realm that you don't need to. (laughs) It doesn't mean that you're going to be talking to shadow spirits or anything like that. Activating your third third eye is like activating another one of your senses. So you don't want to walk around here like willingly 
unable to see your future, unable to see into the other realms, unable to see all these things, do you? So it's really super important, especially if you want to have the life that you desire, that you're able to see that what that life really looks like and that you're able to visualize it clearly, not just in a third, a 3D realm, but in the 5D so that you can get the fullness and the breath and the, and the beauty of all of it. So third eye healing is very critical in this process. All right, we've come a long way in 13 days, right? So I want you to go on and again, go on YouTube, go on Insta, go on like uh, Spotify or iTunes, find yourself some third eye chakra healing, right? Um, Music and yeah, And, and listen to that, meditate with it, sleep by it, get yourself some amethyst, some crystals, and just relax and have fun with your intuition. All right, we're going to see you again very, very soon. But until then, never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, hey there, hey there. So today is day 14 of 88 Days to Manifest Your Best Life or Manifest Your Best Life in 88 Days, whichever way you want to cut it. And this is a very special day because today we are dealing with the last or the seventh of the major chakras, the crown chakra. This is the one that I think everybody is like between the crown and the third eye. This is the one that when they think of chakras, that's like the main one that they think of. Right. And um, it's interesting to me that while, yes, it's all of them are important. I think we place so much emphasis on that third eye and the crown chakra that we don't really give it its just due. In other words, I think that we are requesting and requiring more of that, these upper chakras, than we probably should because all of them have to work in concert and be in alignment in order for you to function properly as the being that you truly are. Okay, And in order for you to manifest or create your world or recreate the world in your desired manner, all of them have to be in alignment, right? So the crown chakra is symbolized by the lotus flower, you know, with a thousand petals. So it gives this infinite feel to it, right? And it is truly the divine consciousness like that's the ultimate kind of gateway from the physical to the divine. And then there's uh, actually one, two, three more, four more up top, <laughs> four more chakras up top, and then one more down below. So uh, there's an earth star chakra, and then there's uh, four more even above the crown. So that really, to, to me, the crown literally located at the top of your head. So, you know, when a baby is born and either the crown of their skull is soft and malleable. It's not kind of closed down and and hard bone. And yes, that is because that, you know, it's all, there's a lot of different reasons, but one of the most significant metaphysical reasons I feel like is once you're kind of out into exposed to the open air and exposed to the 3d where you're an independent being from your mother, right? then that that's kind of when the 3D world really kind of creeps in. It's almost symbolic to me of, okay, we're going to shut all this down so that you can begin on your journey, right? Your 3D physical journey. That's a whole nother aside. Um, but it is, it is represented by violet, which is the color of purity, spirituality, and enlightenment. The element is consciousness, just pure consciousness. There's no water fire. There's no space. It's just pure consciousness. So your, your, your eternal ethereal being um, in its purest form would, I would say would be what I would represent as consciousness. It is the highest level of us. That is really kind of like that gateway to the connection to the higher self. So when I talk about being connection to higher self, it is, you know, you're connecting out through the crown chakra. I often talk about that this vertical um, conversation is so much more important than the conversations you're having here, because if you're not having a proper conversation between third dimensional and fifth dimensional and beyond, if you're not having this proper conversation and this alignment isn't there where you can really be led by the spirit realm, right? And truly be a spirit led being, right? A being of love, right? When we talk about being an, uh, um, 
reborn or Christ-like that's really actually vibrating and living by the vibration of love and light and being being aware, awakened to your higher consciousness. We talked about being woke yesterday, being awakened to your higher consciousness. When your crown chakra is open, when it is in alignment, when it is not blocked, when you are not blocking, I want you to also understand something. A blockage of the third eye, so especially, or the crown chakra really is you. It can be other people telling you certain things to make you disbelieve. But at the end of the day, it's you that has to decide that you're ready to open it. It's you that th there is no outside influence that says, okay, we're just going to bloop, open your crown. No, you from a higher self perspective, consciously or unconsciously have made a decision that it is time for your third eye to be activated or opened and the crown chakra to be open and in balance. That is when we go through our spiritual awakening, right? Um, we have a clarity of mind. I'm looking over here because I have notes. Um, we begin to get a greater clarity of mind. In other words, the 3D mind and the 5D consciousness finally start to gel and say, oh, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to get it. You're going to find that you have an increased empathy and compassion. You have a greater sense of purpose. Why? Because right above the crown chakra, right about six inches or so above, is the Ka chakra. Ka. And that is where our soul's purpose is, is held. So the the knowing, and we're, and we're not going to get into that right now, but the, the knowing of this Ka chakra, the knowing that yours, what your soul purpose is and what you, desi what you desire to come here to do and to be is held in that Ka chakra. And as it's held in that Ka chakra, once the crown chakra is open, now we have a pathway to what? Higher consciousness. So now one of the first things that drops in is I'm here for a higher purpose. I know I'm here for a higher purpose. And you begin to discern and, 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 and learn and remember why you came here. Okay. Your intuition is of course going to improve and you're going to begin to have a reduced level of anxiety and stress. I will say to you though, at first people say, well, no, that was way more stressful when my crown and my third eye opened. It can be because it's jolting to the, to the physical being because now we're having higher vibrations and higher frequencies enter into the physical being as a reality, whereas before it was just a fantasy. So that can be a little jarring as you're trying to navigate and get your sea legs, so to speak. It can also be a little jarring because you're going to begin to see things. You're going to have visions. You're going to have dreams. You're going to have more lucid dreams. You, you right? All of these things kind of come online as if you like turn on these different programs and other people may not believe you. They may not understand you. Some people may think you're nuts. That's just kind of a, right? So it can be a little, eh, but what you need to do is plug into either online or in-person communities like this one where we know and where we believe you and where we're not going to call you crazy, right? We're all higher beings. We are all spiritual beings here having a human experience. And at this community, we get that and that's how we live our lives, right? Now, when we're going through a depression, we're feeling a lack of purpose. We It's harder to focus it's very confusing. You know, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of indecisiveness, a lot of, you know, you're just like, oh, I feel super disconnected. That's showing that there's either a partial or a complete blockage. And, and I will say, and sometimes you can get headaches and migraines and like, it can be kind of weird. Insomnia, like fatigue, like that's all physical ramifications of what could potentially be happening in your crown chakra. So listen, if you're beginning to experience that and you need to go through that healing, again, purples, we talked um, yesterday about the amethyst um, and I would say like celestite, that's what this one looks like, clear quartz, selenite, all of those are just going to help, right? They're just going to help kind of ease things. I will say, take some time to go, like if you can go outside, go into nature, if you can draw yourself a nice bath. If you can diffuse like frankincense, myrrh, lavender, um, what else would help with the crown chakra? Anything, any incense that's of a higher realm. If you can burn incense, that's like divine healing or divine temple, those help as well. Um, relax, meditate, 
relax and just kind of allow your physical being to relax so that your ethereal being can get back online. Okay. So be gentle with yourself. All right, guys, that's my take on the crown chakra. I want you to never forget, please give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. And I'll see you soon. Bye.